Hey everyone, thanks for watching us here on YouTube. Uh, we are here bringing you uh, 10 quick takes on uh, these new Jumpstart Commanders. Uh, we couldn't be more excited about it. Uh, if you like the show here and everything, you can help us out real quick by hitting subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get to the 10K subscribers. We're getting closer and closer, thanks to you, so thanks very much. But also you can check us out at Patreon, patreon.com slash commandersbrew, and you can go help uh, donate to the show directly and get involved on our Discord and actually help us brew our decks uh, when it comes to uh, our decks for every week. So get over there, check that out, patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Uh, we're having a ton of fun in the Discord all the time. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's talk about the 10 legendary creatures from jumpstart and uh what we're gonna do with them so the first one that um that we want to get into well so so first of all there's 10 the, the 10 that we're talking about there's a couple multicolored in non-traditional ways and there's a couple of monocolored um first one is a good example because it, it shows us the multicolored we're talking about here so emil the blessed emil right Am I right about that? M-E-L, M-E-L. M-E-L, M-E-L. Anyways, <laughs> Emil. That's kind of a funny name to name a unicorn. <laughs> uh, M-E-L or Emil the Blessed. Two white white for a 4-4 legendary creature, a unicorn. Um, you can pay three generic and exile another target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So that right there, pretty good ability, a blink ability that you can... Uh, you know, do that at any time. Cool activated ability. But also we have whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay a hybrid Selesnia. So you can pay green or white. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on it. If it's a unicorn, put two plus one plus one counters on it instead. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously uh, this cares about unicorns. Uh, so if you really want to go hard and do like a unicorn tribal, you can. Uh, there are 24 unicorns, uh, in, counting Emil, Emil. <laughs> it doesn't sound right, uh, <laughs> counting this one. So 23 other unicorns that you can, uh, uh, use, and they all exist in Selesnya colors. Uh, there's even one colorless one. Um, so you've got the resources. Are they worth it? That's up to you. There is certainly one that is a two, <laughs> a three mana vanilla two, two. Uh, so, you know, you look into that yourself, decide if you want to go full unicorns, but there are some cool ones. More importantly, though, I like that it's a, we got a, we got a blinking Celestia, uh, commander that also deals in plus and plus one counters. I think this is a really good design. I like this a lot. I think it's great. Uh, what was that? There was an Eldrazi creature that you had to have colorless mana to do something like this. Uh, yes. It would blink things. That yes. creature could blink opponents' things. So, like there was, like there was a bit yeah. more utility there. Uh, but the the when creatures enter, you get to give them plus and plus encounters. That's not dependent on you blinking them. That's just as you're casting them. The way I would go with the meal would be to just look for a regular plus and plus encounter deck. I want to look at undying creatures. Mm. Um, or the the other the other version the the persist, persist yeah. creatures ones that come back with minus one minus one so I can counter those so I can get infinity recalls of them. I want to look at like oh, there's all those like creatures that say like oh if you have something with a plus one plus one counter it gets first strike or trample or whatever. Uh, I want to lean onto those and there's a lot of great token makers that when they enter, they make tokens. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm also looking to probably blink those, and I can pay to make those tokens bigger if I've got extra mana lying around at the end of a turn. I think this is a very powerful commander, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Yeah, and it, the thing is that the 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 blink or the flicker or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's it's the instant version of it. It's not. It doesn't wait till mm -hmm. end of turn. It happens right away. So um, it's the kind that you can't save creatures from board wipes, but you can save them from removal and stuff like that. Uh, and you can't do it to itself. So it's got to be another right. one. So first right. first up here, I'm, I'm impressed. I love this card. I love... You can go tribal. You can not. I love it. I think it's really cool. Next up, Brewback the Grandiloquent. Ooh, I don't wow. know if that's a real word. Uh, <laughs> it is now. Two in a blue, legendary human advisor, one four. If an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. I mean, mill is tough to do in Commander because we got a hundred card decks. Um, I think the best mill deck is probably blue black, led by Phoenix, and turns all of your creatures into mill creatures. But this card sure goes in that deck, <laughs> right? Yes. If you're doing a mill deck, this card goes in challenging to make Bruvac work on their own though 
Yeah, there there is a mono blue mill deck, I think. Uh, yeah, it yeah, Mike and has it, one. It, yeah, and it's it's Mike will admit, and he says to us many times that it's kind of an underpowered mill deck. But we've seen it do some we've seen it do some work. I've seen yeah. other versions do a lot of work as well. So I, I think that I think Bruvac has his own deck that is is pretty powerful. I think like yeah. I mean, not a lot of ways we can go with this. I mean, the yeah, exactly. the only take to take is mill, but uh, sure, and it's it is powerful. and it is opponent. So it's not like it's not like you can sell, use him in a self mill deck either. Right, right. Sort of double up. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the keywording of mill. Here we go. Okay, so next we have in in Iaz, in Iaz, the Gale Force three blue blue, for a Jin four four flying. It's one of these ones that's that's actually the two colors because we've got an activated ability here with a with a hybrid mana. So two and an Azorius, so white or blue, uh, attacking creatures with flying get plus one plus one until end of turn. And whenever three or more creatures you control with flying attack, each player gains control of a non land permanent of your choice controlled by the player to their right. So everyone just wow. grab something from the player to their right. And they just get it now. And well, but you, you choose decide. all decide exactly. Yeah. You are picking for everyone. Uh, wow, that is a fun bit of chaos in a in an Azorius commander. But um, you're gonna get the best part of that deal totally. every time. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, and, you are. And and, and with with and so because of the first ability, attacking creatures get plus one plus one until end of turn with a pump. You're gonna be you're going to be incentivized to put a lot of cheap flyers in your deck. So, like, I'm happy to be like, you know what? Take this 1-1 one, one flyer. I will take your huge enchantment that, uh, yeah, non-land permanent. Could be anything. And that pump ability can be used more than once. There's no tap on it. Mm -hmm. So, like, as you go in the game, you can really pump that up. Yeah. I think this is a pretty cool commander. Uh, it's very straightforward. I don't see a lot of ways to go outside of that, but... Man, that's fun. You, you can probably also sneak in all of those like Zedru classics. Most recently, we were given nine lives. Yes. We can like ship that off to an opponent to, to our yeah. to to our left and just be like, well, when that thing goes, you're out. So <laughs> have fun. Yeah, I think I was about to say like you can go just flyers in general and then just sort of give them like give your opponent the uh, like the one one spirit that you made. You know, because you're probably running that type sure. of stuff in this deck. And then you're taking their best permanent, you know, uh, or just focus on that. I, I love I love it when you can go two ways with a commander. It's great. Or more, yeah. for that matter. Yeah. Cool. What's next? Uh, next up, we got a mono blue commander through and through. This is Ormos Archive Keeper. Four blue blue, Sphinx, five five. Flying, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead put five plus one plus encounters on Ormos Archive Keeper. And you can pay one blue blue, discard three cards with different names, draw five cards. Whoa. <laughs> so it's expensive. Uh, dropping a six mana commander, you know, you're not going to get to do that more than once in most games. Uh, then you got to mill yourself down to zero, which there's lots of ways to do that. We, the, the, the lab man decks have figured out how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that you'd want it. Like, this is not as good as that. Like, like <laughs> yeah. you'd rather just have lab man. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if you would draw a card, it's a replacement effect. So instead of losing the game, if you if you're meant to draw five cards, you would put twenty plus one, and you put twenty five plus one plus one counters on Ormo. So I mean, that probably ends the game pretty quick. Yeah, it, it, it's weird to me to take away the full effective Lab Man Lab Maniac is what I'm shortening it. Yeah, um, Fast as Oracle and the other Jace also do that. Do you just want those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could probably throw this in there just in case as another way to like yeah. not lose the game by accident, you know. It's uh, true. But uh, but it's like the worst version of those by far. Uh, there's a lot more setup. Yeah, if you're trying to make a giant commander, there's easier ways to do it than milling yourself and maybe dying because of it, you know. How do you feel about just the other ability? Discard yeah. three cards with different names. Draw five. I'm more interested in that. I I don't mind discard three cards and with different names. I mean. You can't discard two islands and something. So that's notable, yeah. though. You know, you can't just be tossing basics uh, to this, um, which if you're if this is your commander, that is actually something that probably does come up, actually. Um, but drawing five cards is sweet. And if it's in a deck, you know, maybe in the 99 of something that 
it wants to fill the graveyard, obviously, with uh, this type of effect, and I think that's pretty sweet. Pretty good. Three mana to do that's not bad. Uh, okay, this one, though. Kel's Fight Fixer. Two black black for the 4-3 Azra Warlock. The Azra were from Battle Bond, and they make a, a, re a return here in Jumpstart. Um, she's a legendary uh, Azra Warlock uh, with Menace, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may pay a hybrid Demir. If you do, draw a card. You can also pay one, sack a creature, and Kells gains indestructible until end of turn. Ooh. Yes. So they sack mm. ability right on there. One mana, you know, you prefer to see this as something for free, obviously, but this is a nice, this is sweet. She gains indestructible, so you, you'll pay the one for that. Uh, and every time you can pay the extra Demir hybrid to draw a card. So it's basically, she says, pay uh, one and a Demir hybrid, so two mana to sack a creature and draw a card, and she gets indestructible. That's sweet deal. Like, I'll take That's it. That's very good. And you don't even yeah. have to do the draw a card thing. Like, you can just make her indestructible if you've got the one mana, right? So she has Menace, so I'm thinking Voltron, hard to destroy. That's also Voltron, so I probably want to do a nice mix of... Oh, she'd be great for... Um, uh, I, I want to include... What's that artifact that has that instant equip for Black Black uh, oh, based on the number cranial, of artifacts? Cranial plating? Is that what cranial it's plating, cranial I think. Cranial something? <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> it's about a cranium, but like, you know, throw that on her as a plus Menace. It's like, that's pretty good. Yeah, cranial plating. Queen of Plating, I want to do, so maybe I'm doing an artifact theme with lots of little artifact creatures. I can probably, yeah, with blue, I can generate a million Thopters, so I can use those as my sack. Yeah, powder. definitely. Yeah, sacrifice those, and then drawing more cards from that. I like that a lot. I like, I also like the, I know, like, blue steel effects are permanent, um, but it's still, like, you know, you'll still steal something, and then if you have to, sacrificing your, your opponent's stuff is not bad. Um, yeah, there's something there as well, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I like Kells a lot. I think she's a solid commander as well as a really good card in a lot of other decks as well. Cool uh, sack. So outlet. next up is a uh, tiny bones trinket thief. What a cute name! Uh, one in a black for a one-two legendary skeleton rogue. At the beginning of each end step, that's every player's turn. If an opponent discarded a card this turn. You draw a card and you lose one life. Activated ability, four black black. Each opponent with no cards in hand loses ten life. Whew. Discard decks are tough in Commander because <laughs> yeah. they draw a lot of hate. People do not like to play against them. Yeah. Um, it's already a significant amount of work to get the table empty-handed. That's a tall order. That is very hard to do. Um so then this activated ability probably wants to target someone. You probably need to focus on one person and make them lose 10 life. But, like, I kind of feel like if they're out of cards, you're just going to win. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, like, do you really need to accelerate it like that? I don't know. Tiny you know Bones seems to operate in a few angles here. I think that that's exactly what you want. If, if, yeah? someone's, if someone has made it so that now... Um, you know, everyone has no cards in their hand because of their discarding deck. And the worst is when that happens and they don't just win. And there is no winning for True. a bit, right? True. So at least then if, if, if they get that if they get that part of their game plan completed, Tiny Bones is going to end the game quickly, right? Now we're going to be paying 12 mana a turn and gain, everyone's going to lose 20 life and we only, we only live for, you know, one more turn. Um, so I think that that's, I think that that's good. I actually like this card for that reason. I hate playing against discard decks, um, because usually the, it's, it's just that it's like, it's like, it's kind of like playing against a stack deck. It just stops everyone else from playing. So one, yeah. one person gets to play the game and a lot of, and you know, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like you should like go ahead and play a discard deck. It's not like it's forbidden or something, but like, uh, you know, it's just not, it's just not as fun. But Tiny Bones is a great card to, to include in those decks, I think. I, I, I am excited to see Tiny Bones come up because it means, just like I said with the life gain decks with the M, with M21, just put me out of my misery and kill me as quickly as possible with this, with yeah. the strategy then. So hopefully this will do it. Uh, next, we have Muxus. It's a mono red. Uh, Goblin Grandee. Four red red for, so six mana is a lot, for Legendary Goblin Noble. Uh, it's a 4-4. Four, four. 
It's got a lot of text on it. When Muxus enters the battlefield, reveal the top six cards of your library. Put all goblin creature cards with CMC five or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, whenever Muxus attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other goblin you control. Uh, so, you know, uh, we've got a lot of options to choose from when it comes to goblin commanders. There's, we've got gruel ones, we've got Rakdos ones, we've got uh, mono red ones, obviously. Um, and Muxus is obviously mono red, but it's, it's a bit of a different thing. Like, usually we're all about creating tokens or, you know, something like with, like with one of the Krenkos. There's a couple of Krenkos. Uh, this one is about, I guess, just like, I like that it's it fills the the your battlefield with goblins, with non-token goblins. That's what I'm excited to see. The fact that it gets pumped for each other goblin you control, it doesn't have trample. Like you'll you'll need something else to make this really hit hard, I think, and hit hard enough. I think so. I'm not like as stoked about Muxus as this like big, you know, Voltron style commander or anything. But um, but I love the the ETB ability. If we can get that working, that's really mm -hmm. great. There are seven other goblins CMC greater than five. There's only no, no. It's yes. It's five or less. Yes, I know. Oh, I just oh, did oh. a search to see why did they say five or less. What does that exclude? That excludes exactly seven other goblins. So most uh, goblins are going to be hit with this. I can't, for the life of me, imagine why that matters why they couldn't just give us the extra <laughs> seven goblins. Yeah, like, is, is, is there, what's a six mana goblin that, like, they don't want us to hit, you know? Like, <laughs> it is weird. Because fives are still, fives are fair, but sixes aren't? I don't yeah, know. I mean, I mean, we get a uh, goblin, um, what's that one? The one where it lets you fling goblins? It, it comes with three little tokens. We get that one, that was just, like, the best one. Got Siege Gang Commander? Siege Gang Commander, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like it's it's a it's a nice option if you're tired of playing Krenko. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna build a goblin deck. I can't imagine much else you'd do with this. Yeah, so cool. I, I and I, you know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if if the only mono red goblin deck we ever see is Krenko, like how boring. I like that they created another one. That's sure it's not as powerful, but like, hey, it's fun. Goblins are fun. Yeah, a lot of good synergy I like, there. I like the feeling of just like not knowing what collection of goblins will appear. Like yeah, they all do different things. Those little stinkers. Yeah, here's our Rakdos with the hybrid mana. Here's our, it's got Rakdos identity. This is Sethron Herloon General. The co the cost is three red red. Legendary Minotaur Warrior four four. Whenever Sethron or another non-token Minotaur enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-3 red Minotaur creature token. And you can pay 2 in Arakdos. Minotaurs you control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain Menace and Haste until end of turn. Nice. Nice. Yep. This is what you want, right? This is what you want yeah. in a Lord. It pumps your guys, gives them evasion... Uh, I mean, haste is a nice bonus also. Like, for three mana, you're getting a lot there. They all get plus one, plus oh. They all get menace. They all get haste. Like, that's sweet. Not to mention that it does another thing that you want a lord to do, which is like, hey, I'm playing minotaurs. Give me more minotaurs, right? So, like, every minotaur you play essentially is two. So, uh, just, it, yeah, this is great. I think, like... Is this our? This isn't our first actual Rakdos Minotaur Lord. Isn't there another one? Yes, there's another Minotaur Rakdos Minotaur Lord. Uh, I'm looking for them. I can't find them right now. I know. Was it the, I know people. Gods? People always play the God. People always play um, um, Mogus because it because yeah. he's a God, but he's not actually a Minotaur and doesn't actually care about Minotaur stuff. It's Neheb, one of the versions yes, of Neheb. Right. That's right. Yeah, Neheb is a uh, yes, absolutely. But I think Sethron now is probably. Better if you're going hard Minotaur tribal. Right? I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And I like it a lot. I think it's good. I think this is this is a great leader for a, a tribal deck. This is yeah. That being said, not a lot of other options you can you can take with it, right? It's straight up. It's Minotaurs. You're not playing anything else with the uh, with Sethron. You know what you're gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. Uh, who's next? Uh, Zerzoth is next. Another mono uh, red commander. It's two and a red for a two three legendary devil. And I mean, we went, we're going hard on the tribal synergies here. Uh, whenever another, <coughs> sorry, whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, 
you create a 1-1 red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. And whenever one or more devils you control attack one or more players, you and those players each draw a card, then discard a card at random. That's pretty chaos -y. So you, it's it's not rummage. I know that that's like a not an official keyword or whatever because it's it's just like a weird it's just like a random loot. It's a gamble. Yeah, right. So you draw a card, then you discard it random. I mean, I guess gamble lets you tutor the card, so that's different it's, as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't, anyways, I don't know if we have a name for no, it. No, there's no there's no name for it, but it's 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 draw a card, then discard it random. Um, but yeah, specifically caring a lot a lot about a bunch of devils though, which is interesting. Well, and I love that this, so like Jumpstart, we didn't explain what the th the theme of it, but Jumpstart is meant to be a bit tribal, right? That's sort yes. of the theme of it. Um, this one doesn't have to be because your opponents will be drawing cards not on your turn uh, and you'll be making devils automatically. So mm -hmm. you will have access to devil tokens whether or not you have any other devils in the deck. So, I mean, I think that's great. I'm... I'm so so if you want to break away from Devil's Tribal, like... You, you can, because it kind of represents... It's kind of its own engine that way. Yeah. That being said, how good is this ability of whenever one or more Devils you control attack one or more players, you and them draw a card and then discard at random? Like, I, I... It's okay to have this for you. It's okay to have it for them. I don't know, like... It's weird. It's very even. Keeps people on their toes. People hate wheel effects. Like mm -hmm. if you have like a creature that when it does damage, like that uh, dragon mage, people are like, I don't want that to hit. I don't want. I don't want that. I mm -hmm. want my hand. Right. Like people are. People have a game plan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this won't erase the whole game plan. But like I think people would be concerned about losing that card. Yeah, I don't know. Can mess with people a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I actually my favorite part of this is just making devils. I think it's great. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to making a bunch of those devils and like doubling up their damage or something. Mm -hmm. Doing some sacrifice stuff. Yeah, cool. Uh, I like him more as a 99 though, because I because I would want another color in there somewhere. I think. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what's our last one? Nayeth of the Dire Hunt. This is uh their end. Of, this is Gruel. Two green green for a human warrior, 3-3 three, three with a gruel activated ability. Um, whenever one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card. So, I mean, fighting doesn't happen that often. You need cards for it for the most part. But card, creatures become blocked a lot. So you're going to be drawing cards that way. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay two in a gruel. If you do, double target creature's power until end of turn. That creature must be blocked this combat if able. Still no fights. No fights on this one either. Nope. Uh, but doubling a creature's power is very good. Uh, if it has trample, I mean, so a lot of times people won't chump tramplers because what's the point of saving a point? Like this mm -hmm. is um, throwing a tome for nothing. Um, now they have to block it, so they might want to consider actually hoping for a multi-block to actually get a trade out of it. This is, I love this card. This is the one, I think, in my opinion, we saved, not necessarily the best, but my favorite for last. Okay. Uh, because all those fight cards, which are a staple of limited and of standard sometimes, uh, which didn't really have a great home in Commander. I know the Werewolf Commander, um, the one that we were all massively disappointed in, I know that it fights specifically with Werewolves. Uh, so this card's a great card in that deck, obviously. But just outside of that, we didn't really have a home for all, all of these, like, kind of, all these cool fight cards. Um, and as a result, they kind of weren't that cool because we didn't really use them in Commander. Well, now they have a home. Now we have, we can really brew a deck around this now. I'm excited to brew this deck. I, I, I'm not saying it's going to be really good or anything, but I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. Fighting is a really cool magic mechanic and the fact that now we're going to be drawing cards when we do it that brings it to the next level that really makes it really good and this doubling yeah. of the power thing and making sure it's blocked like that's a whole other thing as well like you've got like a weird lure it's not, it's not a true lure because it's not like it has to be blocked by everything or you know you don't get to pick what blocks it just has to be something blocking it but um but still you're getting a card out of it you're getting a card out of it i love it i love nath i think this is really she's really really good uh, design here love it neat well that's it those are our quick takes 
Those are the quick takes on the new legendary creatures. There's a lot of great reprints in this set as well. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, if you ask me what Jumpstart actually is, I couldn't tell you. Um, I don't fully know what it is. Just a bunch of cool cards, it seems, right now. Uh, <laughs> for more information. If, he, if, if you are interested, Jumpstart is a sealed <laughs> product. Oh, okay. Um, each pack is predetermined oh. um, to be something. Um, and so what you're desi- what it's designed to do is you can buy two packs, shuffle shuffle them together, and you'll have a working deck. Um, and it's meant to be sort of like, oh, it's angels teamed up with devils. Oh, what did you get? It was like, oh, I'm I'm minotaurs teamed up with sphinxes. Uh, and then that deck kind of that's why there's all that hybrid stuff. So mm. it still works on its own, but it might help the other half of your deck, or it might not. Um, and they're pre-printed runs. I think each pack has some variants but the core of it's always going to be the same like maybe the top mythic or rare might be different like there are mythic cards that you don't always get in that pack but the reprints which we're not going to get into here are off the charts yeah yeah um yeah maybe we'll do something about the reprints because they are really really cool so um yeah uh, but thanks for watching this one um and 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 listening obviously uh Again, check us out. Um, uh, here every week we're making new decks, so come on back, and uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.